everybody, it's Stu Carter from Atama ETV. I'm back. I'm broadcasting from yet another top secret toy testing lab. You think with my labs being top secret, the enemy wouldn't find them, but they do. So I continue to have to relocate my lab, but I remain in an undisclosed location on an island in the South Pacific. Let's see what we're talking about today. Well, what are we talking about today? Today I'm talking about some candy toys from Japan. Candy toys, they're like, uh, they're not blind box. You can see what's in them. But they come with a piece of candy inside. They're packaged like that. They're not quite Gashapon capsule toys. Although these are, toys like this are often sold in capsule-like machines or in uh, what you would call uh, the UFO catchers, the, arm, <clears throat> the claw arm machines. You can find these in those kinds of machines. But these are from Bandai, and they're sold on the shelf at Toys R Us. In Japan, in fact, I, I uh, saw those, I recorded, I reported on these earlier, I think way back in June when I was there for the Toy Fair. But these are from Bandai, and that's called the Converge series. And they've got others in the series, they may continue it. It's sort of like a smooshed character, like we sometimes we call them semi-deformed or super-deformed. They're not quite super-deformed, they're semi-deformed, let's say that. And uh, they've also got, uh, the, well, I, I've seen some uh, Power Rangers uh, in these as well, and they may continue, and they may make some more. These are Star Wars Converge. This is from the first series. We've got, well, let's get a close-up look at the box. Okay, so what do you get? Well, here you see you get Kylo Ren, and of course, he's got that cross guard lightsaber. Once he started that, you know, he's going to have to have it from now on. Here's a look at the back of the box. You can see a few other uh, of the toys in the series. It says Converge series, and they have a number on them. Kylo Ren is number nine. Uh, there appears to be about, well, they, they come box of, of ten, apparently. Uh, I'm not really sure how many in total there are. You get a, a First Order Stormtrooper, and you get a Captain Phasma. Who is Captain Phasma? What, what does Captain Phasma look like with its helmet off? His or her helmet off. Is that a spoiler? I don't know. I don't know if it's a spoiler or not. Here's a First Order Flame Trooper. Also available. I didn't buy because I'm too cheap. You know why? Because when I go to Japan to buy toys, I spend thousands of dollars. I can't buy everything. Also available, Darth Vader, a Yoda with a lightsaber, R2-D2, and an original Stormtrooper. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. As far as I know, eight different available and come in boxes of 10. So you probably would get all of them if you bought a box. Let's, oh, and these cost about 500 yen, 500 yen, uh, about uh, $4. Let's just say, 4 to $5. All right, let's get these out of the box and have a look. Okay, so here's what you get when you open up the box. This is the uh, First Order Stormtrooper. You get the guy, oh, he's in pieces. I'm gonna have to put them together. Yeah, I'm going to have to put his arms together. And then you get a little piece of candy. It looks like either gum or mint. Why do they do this? Why? Because Disney, it's a licensing thing. Disney licenses the use for guys to make these toys for Bandai and Takara Tomy. And, they, and Bandai says, we want to make minifigures. And, and, and Disney says, no, you can't make minifigures. We'll let Takara Tomy do that. But you can have, you can put uh, candy, you can have candy toys. That's just how they divide it up. They divide stuff up like that. So that's why they're doing that. Okay. I mean, they had to put the candy in there. You know, if they didn't put the candy in there, it wouldn't be a candy toy, and then it would be a minifigure, and Takara Tomy wouldn't like that. So, because they have permission to make the minifigures. Yeah. Okay. Let's put them together. Okay. So here's your first order Stormtrooper all put together. And I got to say, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty impressed with the detail on these guys. And now they gave us a base. You know, you ever have problems with, like when your toys falling off the shelf, especially the little guys like this? This base they gave you, that's a pretty solid, serious base. Look at that. It's like, I mean, he may, he might, you know, fall forward maybe, but it's really designed. It's like, doggone it, this has got to stay upright. I know you guys who live in California <laughs> with all the earthquakes, you probably have trouble with that. But, you know, they will stay up by themselves. I'm going to take this base off for this and the rest of them. To show you that they they stay up they stay upright pretty well and yeah I'm impressed with the detail of the first order stormtrooper he's got look on the helmet you even got the little vent hole things and of course the black and you got details inside the black on the sides of the helmet even you got the little hinges so you can you know, hinge his helmet off 
And then on the arm guards and things, and he's got his little scope on his little little laser rifle thingy. The scope helps you aim. Of course, these are inaccurate. Short barrel weapons are not accurate, so you need the scope maybe to help you out. And his little armor pieces, even down here in his little utility belt, and on his little things for his boots. A lot of little details, even the little black where he's got his little hingy parts so he can walk. Now, is this part of the uniform? I'm trying to get in close. This. Maybe so, I don't know. You guys who know these uniforms well, these armors, the armors on the stormtroopers, you can tell me, is this part of the original Disney armor or is that just some weird thing? I suspect it's part of it. You can even see inside here on his belt, there's utility belt stuff. So pretty, uh, I mean, for a little tiny figure, they really put a lot into it. It's why it's a little more expensive than a lot of mini, 500 yen. A lot of things like this would only cost 200 yen in Japan, but these are more. All right, let's look at the Flame Trooper. First Order Flame Trooper. Yeah, this guy. Yeah, see, he stands up. But, yeah, a long term, he gets another kind of a stand, and he, he, it'll help you stay up. And um, the Flame Trooper, I'll tell you what, though. I mean, it's, a lot, it's really cool. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's a lot of fun to use a flamethrower. Uh, you get to burn down houses, you get to burn up people and stuff. You know, throw that flame. Flamethrowers are very, can, very good way to get people out of a bunker. You get that little slit where they uh, shoot out the bunker, you put that flame in there, nobody's going to survive, right? They all come running out burning. So lots of fun. But you know what? Uh, if somebody shoots you in the back, they're going to hit this tank and you're going to blow up. That's one reason why you might not want to be a flame tripper. Another reason is this is so heavy. It's freaking heavy. It's so heavy you can't carry your own weapon. So you got to count on your buddies taking care of you. On the other hand, maybe that's a good thing. So like while well, everyone else is going, you know, they're fighting. Uh, you just sit back. You sit down in a tent in the trench. Just hang back and wait. And then flame tripper, get up here. And then you come running up, you know. But until then, you can just kind of hang back. Because otherwise you'll just get shot in the back or whatever with this tank and you'll blow up. There you go. Oh, and so, yeah, nice detail. And he holds, he holds the flamethrower thing pretty well. And it is a flexible little hose. Hose is flexible. Helps you plug it in. It plugs in. And you got the little special vents on his helmet because the flamethrower probably has, like, really nasty gas. You want to get hurt while you're you know, burning up other people. <laughs> and... The flamethrower tanks, see, look at that. Three tanks and associated you know, equipment on there. It's still, yeah, it's only two colors. But that's a good thing about the stormtroopers, really. Even in the movie, they're only two colors. They're not really fancy armor things. Yeah. That's your, oh, the little tanky thing came off. I could put that back in easy enough. There. Yeah. That's your first order flamethrower. That's a good one to have. Okay. Um... Captain Phasma, the mystery. Yep, and and it, it got the iconic cape. You know, why does a stormtrooper need a cape? I don't know. That maybe to show rank, right? That's why they do that because the uh, the lieutenants have a little a little gauntlet thing. Well, not gauntlet. Just a little shoulder patch, so you can tell who they are, right? And so the captain, Captain Phasma, who's sort of special, apparently. Uh, gets all this. You can see. Look at this little detail. Like maybe those are some awards on his or her armor and of course he's got the uh the 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 short rifle with the scope again all the silvery stuff this is a flexible cape yeah and, and it came with it's got its own stand like the others i'll put the stand on later because yeah when i put them on the shelf i don't want them to fall over so i'll use that sure captain phasma all right kylo ren yeah Look at that, got the uh, serious cross guard saber. And what's nice about this is they put a tab on his hand and into the lightsaber, so he really holds that well. It doesn't count on the grip of the hand to hold it like a lot of toys. There's that tab uh, to push together, so it's gotta stay in. Uh, and he's got the cool capey thing in the hood going for him. I guess it's a two part cape, right? And uh, that's like, right, that looks really good. That's, that's a nice dynamic kind of a thing there. And, uh, of course, the silvery accents on his helmet, even down to where it's, like, roughed up, just like in the movie. It's a little beat up. Yeah. 
I think I may try to take some close-up shots of these to show you. You can see his mouth guard also is kind of beat up a little bit, weathered. Yeah. And, of course, even on the, on the lightsaber, you can see details in the handle and on, on the other pieces. So, yeah, and on those little armory things. That's very nice. I like that. Okay, and did I say I did not? These guys are just about two, two inches tall there. Let's say two inches tall. Okay, and now because I'm a complete reviewer kind of guy, I'm going to taste test the candy in the candy toy. And if, if I choke and die, put this on YouTube anyway because it'll be really cool. You can say, oh, I saw Stu's last video ever in the history of the universe. What's going to happen? Mm, smells like gum. Mmm. Kind of a crunchy, crunchy, gummy smell, but crunchy. Mm, yeah. Kind of a little bit like one of them pop things, but not poppy. Yeah, it's, it's okay. A little bit bitter. A little bit sour. It's gone. <laughs> That's how long it lasted. It's a short pleasure, short-term pleasure. Okay. Right, so next time, I'm going to look at some Star Wars minifigures from Takara Tomy. They are making in-scale figures that is not deformed. I've got a Kylo Ren. I've got a, a First Order Stormtrooper. These are also die-cast. I've got a Millennium Falcon and one of those walkers, AT-AT walkers. And until next time... Star Wars forces deploy! Between the boring